an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. Well, hello there, listener, and welcome to the Better Than Fine podcast here on the NASM Podcasting Network. I am your host, Darlene Marshall, and I want you to imagine for a moment that you are so gung-ho about your goals. You know exactly what you want. You know exactly what to do. You are making good progress. Maybe you're working with a trainer. Maybe it's with a coach. Maybe you're just doing some program on your own, but it is clicking and you are feeling real good. And then something happens. You stumble a bit. You regress. Maybe something stressful happened at work or in your personal life. Maybe something really disruptive takes you out of that game for a while. And so you know what to do. You know what's worked in the past. And maybe you're even beating yourself up about it. You're frustrated. You're regressing a bit. So you take a break. You like let yourself off the hook for a bit. Totally normal. No shame on any of that. Life happens. People have lives. But you want to get back to it. You want to get back into the game. But for whatever reason, when the time comes, when you're like, okay, okay, picking it back up, you can't seem to get yourself to pick it back up. You're stuck. You are in the stuck place. So what gives with that lack of motivation when you know what to do, but you can't seem to get yourself there? And as coaches, as trainers, we encounter this over and over and over and over. This is part of our bread and butter. But as as clients, as students, as people, we often just want like that perfect motivation hack, that button push that's going to flip the switch back to what's going to work, right? Like make it go. Last week, this happened with a client. Uh, They took a break. They took a long vacation. They'd had a lot of stress at work, a bunch of stuff. And so they had decided that the best thing for their wellness was to take a little break. And then they were really frustrated with themselves with the regression that came next. Even though they agreed it was the right decision, they weren't really happy with where they landed in the end of it all. So they came back to me. They're like, okay. Give me that motivation, coach. They wanted me to wave the magical wand around their motivation like I'm some kind of fitness witch and make it go. That is not what they got, spoiler alert, but I am going to tell you what they did get because that is what this episode is here to dissect. How does motivation work? How do, can we have all these different motivations at once? What happens when those motivations are in conflict? How do we get through it? And how can you get through it when your motivation is lagging? Well, that's what we're here to dissect this week on the Better Than Fine podcast. So let's get to it. Motivation. You have it or you don't, right? Eh, wrong. Buzzer, sound, stop the game. That is not how motivation works. It is not a light switch. You are not a light switch. You are a person. And just like people are in a process, your motivation is also a process. That can be kind of complex. So what is motivation? Well, it's this complex exchange between your body, your subconscious, and your conscious mind. So you have foundational needs. Some of those foundational needs are physiological. That would be like water, food, shelter, sex, air, right? Like you have physical needs. You also have psychological needs. If you've listened to this show for a while, you've heard me unpack that you have the need for autonomy. So do I have a say in my life and how my life is lived? Do I get a choice? That's autonomy. Relatedness. Does my life mesh? Do I have a cohesive self? 
Do my friends and my family and my community and my society match my values, right? Do they all kind of weave together in a cohesive way? So autonomy, relatedness, and competence. Can I show up in the world pursuing the things I want and I'm able to pull them off? So these are all psychological foundational needs. So along with our physiological needs, along with our psychological needs, we've also got a bunch of biology and chemistry that's going to affect us in the moment. So these are things like your stress response that's going to show up in your hormones or your central nervous system. How well am I processing my stress in my life? These are things like dopamine playing a big role. So that's a neurochemical that affects our ability to focus and control our behavior. So let's say that you've had the kind of night's sleep where you're exhausted, you're stressed, life is feeling kind of rough in that time. So your dopamine is a little low. You're going to have trouble focusing, controlling your behavior. And that stress all combined is going to lower your in the moment motivation, your desire to control your behavior and go after the things that you say you want in your life. So we're already getting complex in the motivation equation, but what we haven't touched on is external social pressure and systems of control. That can be good or bad. So on the bad side, we've got things like, like perfect example, being a teenager, when you feel really self-conscious and, and you're afraid that everybody's always watching you and judging you, you are very, very sensitive to your peer group. So you'll even change yourself to fit into that social pressure. And we all are reactive to this. So this is that feeling of like watching people on social media and then feeling like you need to do what they do or my life's not good enough or cute enough or fancy enough or fit enough. That external social pressure is putting pressure on you to change your behavior and it's going to affect your motivation. The good side of that is something like smoking cessation. Right. I remember when I used, to, I used to be an actor, I used to smoke, when all the people in my in-group, my, my group I was hanging out with were smoking, well, I changed social group. And then soon after I quit smoking is right around the time I became a trainer. So there's also I see big positives out there in the like positive social pressure for self-love, self-compassion, inclusion, equity. These are all examples of positive social pressure and systems of control. But when it comes to wellness, the latest fitness trends, the desire to be like conventionally attractive, to look young, to be a certain size, we might override our physiological needs in order to meet these social and expectation needs. So now we're getting a real complex equation of motivation. You're listening to the Better Than Fine podcast. I'm your host, Darlene Marshall. We are talking about how do you unstick motivation. And we're diving into, well, what are the factors that affect motivation in the first place? Because I can't tell you how to get unstuck if we don't know how you get there. So let's continue this train rolling. So we've talked about your physical needs. We talked about your psychological needs. We talked about the way that social pressure and like systems of control can affect our perception of our needs. But what we haven't talked about yet is your conscious mind, your thoughts, the things that actually are you, that you genuinely value and desire, right? If you have a strong value around an aligned life of wellness, well, that's going to be a whole different effect on your motivation than say if you value like partying every night and having a good time. So our choices, our aligned choices are part of this motivation equation. And that's a lot of subtlety and nuance, right? But that subtlety and nuance is in conflict with the way that we're taught to think about how we get around motivation. So our conventional you know, fitness industry, wellness industry milieu, the way we're taught to think about it, is this like rise and grind culture that tells us that it's just mind over matter, right? You just got to want it more. Well, maybe that sometimes works for some people. But the problem with that rise and grind, want it more, get after it mentality is that it discounts the effects of trauma, your unique physical needs, um, lack of resources, social limitations, a bunch of other stuff 
that create the factors of what it means to live a real life in the world. So if I'm a practitioner, fitness professional, wellness coach, out here telling people like, you just got to want it more, tap into that deep motivation. I'm discounting all of these other things that affect your lived experience. And then if you struggle to get motivated in that moment, you're going to think there's something wrong with you. You're going to think that you are a failure or that the, you know, the conventional stuff just doesn't work for me. None of that is accurate or true because motivation is actually really nuanced and subtle. And when we approach it with nuance and subtlety and we make space to unpack all this stuff, well, that's when the real magic happens. That's when we become like the wellness witch. So you're listening to the Better Than Fine podcast. I'm your host, Arlene Marshall. Well, let's talk about how do we actually unstick the motivation equation. So what's it all about? Well, before I listed a bunch of different factors that could affect motivation. So we talked about physical needs, we talked about psychological needs, we talked about social pressure and systems of control. We talked about your actual aligned self, like the things you actually want for you. But sometimes all these different motivations can be in conflict with one another. And if we don't address that conflict, there's a tension there that can be demotivated. So let's, let me give you some examples so that we can, we can really look at this. So if you have a genuine desire to love and accept yourself with compassion, but you also have a ton of social pressure to be perceived a certain way, and that's telling you to act differently than you really are in yourself, that's going to be a pressure. That's going to be in conflict. If, well, we can own We all live in a diet-focused culture, especially if you work in the fitness and wellness spaces. We're talking about dieting all the dang, dang time. That could be in conflict with your literal physiological needs for satiety, the, the, the chemical hormonal experience of satisfaction, for nutrient needs, for caloric needs to support performance. And so a constant pressure to diet versus your literal physical needs to survive, those could be in conflict and pressure, and that's going to affect motivation. Let me give you one more. Physiological exhaustion, like you ain't sleeping enough, you're not rest and recovered, you're overtraining, that could be in conflict with social norms around like push hard, go harder, go home. Every workout has to be the best dang workout. But if you're already exhausted and you are already burnt out, that could actually make it worse. So that's going to affect your motivation to behavior. So sometimes we're stuck. It's because the motivations are in conflict and you might not know when this is happening. You might just feel stuck or demotivated, or you might know that something is off, some that feeling of like conflict and pressure, but you might not know what the needs are that are actually in conflict. Or maybe you know what needs are in conflict, but you don't know what to prioritize first. You know you're not sleeping all that well, but you also feel like you're supposed to exercise. Is an exercise good for sleep? I don't know. Do I work out? Do I go take a nap? Maybe you know that, you know, you, you have a social cultural belief that you should be eating a certain way, but you're also hungry. Which do I prioritize? What do I do? So you remember that client that I mentioned in the intro, like the client who wanted me to be like the fitness witch and wave the magic wand. They wanted the answer to magic motivation. So when I started to guide them to uncover some of these underlying motivations that were in conflict, they started to hesitate. They were guarded. They kind of pushed back like, wait, I just want to plan because that's what they expected. They literally asked me, like, can't we just make a game plan? And I asked them to trust me. We worked together for a long time. So I I had the trust in the equation here. And I said, we're going to get there. But if we just make a game plan without looking underneath at the resistance, the hesitance, what the resistance is being caused by, then the resistance will still be there. And whether it's three weeks or three months or six months or nine months down the line, you're going to come up against this resistance again because it's a pattern. And that cycle is going to continue to repeat yourself. And then you're going to get demotivated again. And we're going to be in the same ding dang place. So you have to look at the resistance. Another word for this like tension is ambivalence. And so the way that we 
look work through this is not that different between, to how you might clean out your dresser doors in your closets. We're going to take it all out. We're going to sort it. We're going to get rid of the things that no longer serve you. Maybe you're going to give some of it to charity. We're going to throw away the toxic and gross stuff. It's not all that different. So you're listening to the Better Than Fine podcast. I'm your host, Darlene Marshall, and we are talking about how do we unstick your motivation? I am going to walk you through the exact process that I use with that client and with every client who is in this situation. So let's get to that. What do we do? How do we get unstuck? Here we go. Step one, recognize that we all have multiple motivations toward action. Some of those motivations might be short term. Hey, I want to look hot on my vacation. Some of those motivations are going to be long term. I want to decrease my risk of, in my case, it's heart disease and cancer. Lots of people in my family have both of those things. I would like to have none of those things. So that's a long-term motivation of mine. Some of these motivations might be new. Like maybe you've just learned, or maybe you're going to learn right now. Here we go. That movement can affect mental health. And so if you are moving regularly in your life, you are likely to be happier. That might be something new that you've learned. And you're like, hey, now I have this new motivation. And some motivations are actually demotivating in the long term. Let me give you a perfect example. When we focus exclusively on how we look, many people have an initial burst of interest in taking better care of themselves. But over time, that interest erodes. And even if they manage to change how they look, they're actually less happy than the people who focus on literally anything else as a motivation. Uh, And eventually you become demotivated and you give up. So I wanna repeat this, like we start by recognizing that we have multiple motivations to change and what those motivations are. And then we try to align those motivations with you, your values and your goals, because on the days that you feel challenged, knowing what your motivations are, And knowing how they align with who you are is what helps to get the engine running. So the next thing I look at my clients, first we start with, you have multiple motivations. What are those motivations? Let's sort them so that we have like some nice piles of like the clothing in the closet metaphor. And then we look at, well, what are your foundational needs and have they been met? So are you sleeping? Are you eating enough to support yourself? Um, do you have too much stress physically or psychologically? Are there other things going on interpersonally where your psychological needs for like love and connection and integration aren't being met? Do you have self-limiting beliefs that have gotten in the way of pulling this off? Do you think it's not going to work? Well, if you don't think that what we're doing is going to work this time, of course, you're not going to go off and do that stuff. So we got to unpack all of the like corners of the emotional drawers. You got to open up the closets and air them out, pull all the stuff out so we can look at it. And then we look at like, what is getting in the way? If it's a belief, well, it's time to work through that self-limiting belief, my friend. If there are any signs of mental health challenges, well, it's time to speak with a mental health professional and to do so with care and compassion and integrity and a lack of judgment. And then it's also important to recognize that there are factors that affect motivation in this honest and self-compassionate way so that we can support ourselves in a positive framing instead of this like shamey, blamey, guilty, I'm not good enough, so I have to change mentality, which is a really short fuse for what we want to be a lifetime burning fire. So we've got what you have multiple motivations. What are they? You have foundational needs. Have they been met in a way that supports you that you feel good about? And these are all prerequisites to what you're motivated toward doing. If We haven't sorted into piles. How are we going to know what to get rid of? What goes to charity and what do we keep? Because it fits real nice. And now we can look at making a game plan. If someone is coming off a break, if they've had a setback, if they're not sure that this is really going to work for them, whatever the first step in the game plan is, needs to be 100% doable. Ideally, they are excited about it. 
and that it aligns with them. And when they're excited and it aligns, that's going to create the momentum to get unstuck. And it's really important in the game plan that we are honoring their current mental, physical, and emotional self. It can't just be a, you're going to go out there and get it, because that might not align with the stress, the burnout, the factors of life. Because remember, we all have lives. As my friend Roger likes to say, people have lives. That's why change is hard. And it might be the, the game plan first step might actually be the referral to a mental health professional, to a doctor, or to getting a coach or a trainer or someone to support the process. And that is a-okay. Maybe that's the first step because that's what they're actually motivated to do. That's what builds momentum. That's what feels aligned is to get help. Nothing wrong with that. And the biggest thing, the A number one thing, if you take one thing out of this episode, I want it to be the next thing I'm going to say. To when motivation is lagging, the most important thing that you could do is to get curious about why. What is your body, your mind, your soul, your self trying to tell you about you and your experience? It is not as simple as, well, that's just persons just being lazy and they don't want to do it or what the heck ever. Because if you have invested the time and the energy to look at your values, your motivations, the influences on your behavior, and to ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? What is this lag about? Then on the days that that lag shows up, you are going to be so empowered to respond to yourself with what is going on and what you want to do. You're going to know your values. You're going to know your goals. And that's going to be so much more powerful than any resistance that you might be feeling. Because otherwise, that resistance is telling you that something is off. Something is out of balance. And if you genuinely want the things that you want and your foundational needs are getting met, you're going to unstick. But it's likely with most clients when they're feeling deeply, deeply stuck that either something's out of alignment, there's a conflict in their motivations, they have a self-limiting belief, or their foundational needs are not being met. So very often this comes up with like nutrition and workouts. It's like, well, are you not eating enough? Or are you not sleeping enough or some other factor that's holding them physiologically back? And so when we look at this whole equation, it gives us the power to self-examine, to know what's aligned, and then to step forward in a motivated, unsticky, aligned, soul-thriving kind of way, which is clearly what we're on about on the show. All right, if you have any questions about any of this, about the motivation research, you want the information, you want to push back, you don't believe me, you think I'm wrong, you think I missed something, please, dear God, tell me if I missed something. Well, you can find me on Instagram. I am darling.coach. You could shoot me an email uh, or you can find me on LinkedIn. If you are a fan of the show, subscribe. But if you really want to support the show, well, you could leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. You could share the show with someone that you think could use a bit of motivation, a bit of psychology, approaching how to get unstuck. Uh, and feel free to tag me in anything that you post on Twitter, on Instagram, or anywhere else out there on the interwebs. We're going to leave it there. And thanks. <laughs>